All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm uh, Brian Dyer Stewart. I'm up here in uh, Down East Maine, where we're slowly getting some green back in the grass and uh, temperatures hitting almost 50 degrees. So, for you who are in warmer climes, we wish you well and send it to us, will you? We've been uh, working on a triage system for Vermont, um, Connecticut, and Maine for about the last uh, almost a year and a half. And uh, Connecticut's has come live. And uh, Maine is going to come live hopefully in the next week, and then we're on to uh, finishing up in Vermont. And uh, we started this project really uh, from uh, wanting triage, but taking off from a Massachusetts project uh, that Scott Friday had developed uh, in Drupal and, and kind of moving on from there. And what, what we'd like to go through today is first a very brief overview of, of why would you want to do triage. Um, What's that about? And then um, looking at uh, examples of how it's in use now in Connecticut and Maine and Vermont, um, and both how it works and what the work involved um, setting up is, and then finally a, a little bit look behind the under the hood at how things work. Uh, this is a project that will be available hopefully by the uh, no later than the end of the summer. Um, as a drop-in module for, for other Drupal sites. Um, and so we look forward to, to sharing this with you. And I think we'll start with, um, with Kathleen. Are you going to give a little bit of an overview of why are we doing this? Oh, I am. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're not the most practiced uh, training team on the planet, let me tell you. Um, so I, I think probably every we'll go through this part quickly. I think everybody in the call uh, basically gets these graphics pretty quickly. Um, that a lot of us um, are having problems with uh, telephone intake, and um, I know in Maine, particularly in our Portland office, which is our most um, uh, heavily populated area, service area, um, we're just sort of in over our heads um, with trying to deal with uh, phone intakes, and and every so everybody's looking for better solutions to um, how to get clients who we can't really help, um, how to point them in the right direction, and point them to the online resources that are available and uh, the other agency referrals that are available um, so that we can hopefully unclog the phone lines and spend more time um, with clients who we can really help and who have problems that are our priorities. Um, so, and, and a second thing for us is also seeing if by instituting this, we can increase our service to uh, some of the more isolated rural areas of the state that we have traditionally, historically, had a hard time reaching. So that will be an interesting um, part of this as well. So what, what we came up with when we started meeting as, um, as three states together was um, the thought that really the crux of the work was kind of reassessing how, really how the whole website is set up and what information is available. We, you know, people have been trying to make search engines and uh, topic lists and libraries and things to help people find things, and uh, the current uh, trend is to also develop um, kind of guided pathways, ways that um, speak to clients from where they're coming from with um, an in-between system, which isn't in this case a uh, reference librarian, but it has those skills to, to guide people to the exact information they're looking for. Um, and so that's really an art. And um, we've looked at that. Uh, the most time that we've spent in this project has really been with each of the sites developing um, those questions in that sense of what content um, do we have, what content are we offering to people, how do we reach out to folks. So what I'd like to do now is leave the slideshow and go to um, just a quick demonstration of um, each of the sites 
that we're working with right now and where the triage is. Um, so in Connecticut, I, I don't know if you're still on the line with us, Kathy? I'm here, yep. Oh, uh, good. So Connecticut has two approaches to the triage, and um, why don't we start with the first one, Kathy, which is just the, the menu item at okay. the top of Well, actually, um, could, Brian, um, if you could click on Get Help, um, on Get Help, okay. Yeah, okay. So this is the, oh, we're missing the link. Um, okay, <laughs> there, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, at any rate, uh, we have, a, we try and direct people in through our Get Help so that there's a little additional information. We talk to them about, you know, some of the, ways they can contact us, but we direct them right here. There's usually a big button there that is for the legal help finder. Uh, um, probably right there. Yeah, what I happened, I, let me explain this. Uh, I, I'm using, because I've used Join Me in the past, occasionally um, there's a conflict in my bandwidth between using Join Me and going off online to get, get the site. So I, I put all the data on my local uh, machine and I'm running it as if my local machine were each, as you see the address here, is each of the sites. So a, a graphic must not have come across. Kathy, I'm sorry for that. Oh, no, that's okay. So the Legal Help Finder for Connecticut, um, you can just click there. This is um, our opening page, and this will walk people into it. But the other way to get here, and um, if you go to the self-help guides and go into a section, it, when it sees you browsing after a few seconds into um, a particular topic, there will be a message that comes up that says, oh, I see you're looking at such and such kind of problem. Would you like some more help? And um, if you click on the yes, I'd like help here, you would actually go also into the triage opening page. Um, and that's optional. You can turn that on or turn that off, but we have it turned on. Um, so I'm going to walk you through uh, getting a restraining order. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be a client here. So the first thing that we do is qualify whether or not the person is a resident of Connecticut or their legal problem is in Connecticut or not. If their legal problem is not in Connecticut, what happens when they click Next is it sends them out to a list of resources in other states so that they're not wasting their time or, as Kathleen said, our time too. Um, so we're going to do My Legal Problem is in Connecticut and click Next. There is um, an optional list of what we call statuses that you can include to further qualify your, um, your search. Uh, Kathleen will be talking about that, so I'm not going to check any of these off here. So Brian, we'll do next. There's also another optional section here where you can um, put in a zip code um, or the people in the, uh, the number of people in the household and the income. And um, if you have programmed in resources for those areas, they would come up um, specifically in the search. Um, otherwise, you're going to get the regular information that we've programmed into the search. What we have here is the, this is going to walk you into the triage. We're going to go into the family section. And it starts asking you questions. In this case, we're going to do I have been abused. And you can see up at the top there's this little little trail that's being built. It's, it's as you said. Um, so we're going to make another choice here. And the second choice down is I want to get a restraining order to protect me and my children. OK, in this case, um, we only had to ask two questions to get to the point where we are ready to give them the results. So if you click on Submit, this is what we're calling the results page. And it 
gives them information that we have actually literally, literally designated to come up when they go down that path and, and indicate that they have that problem. So um, the three, there are three different pieces of content there. And this is what we call here in Connecticut, we, we're calling this the results page. Um, over on the right, there are some additional options. They can print out this results page. Um, they can email it to themselves. If you click on print, I think, Brian, I'm not I, sure. Okay. Oh, good. I, I um, might not have all of the, 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 uh, the logo. I see it didn't come across because it's on my local machine. I'm sorry. Oh, no, but, that's uh, okay. At any rate, yeah, they yeah. get a page that they can print, and you'll see down at the bottom of the page, we've also, because they're going to be taking a piece of paper or emailing it to themselves, we've put in a little bit of a disclaimer and also some credits and um, a link to our survey because we ask them a little survey when they come out of it. Okay. Um, they can also start over from this page if they have, um, if they want to search further or qualify their search a bit more. Um, and if they start over at this point, their, the information that they answered up front in the questionnaires is um, saved. Um, and, so they and we'll don't talk have about that later. So. Yeah. Um, Maybe so we can um, take a look at the same run, unless you had other things to add, Kathy. And, um, that's in okay, May. Kathleen. You can you can do it because she's going to talk about these other sections. Are you with us here, Kathleen? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we properly introduced ourselves. <laughs> oh yeah, Daniel oh, yeah. from Connecticut. I'm Kathleen Caldwell from Maine. So um, we wanted to show you a couple different examples, um, partly to, just to demonstrate kind of how flexible this tool is. Um, once you uh, install the architecture, so to speak, on your Drupal site, then you can really make a lot of different choices at the admin level um, to uh, customize how this thing works. And so you'll just see from going through um, main triage how I've made a bunch of different choices than Kathy and Kate made in Connecticut. Um, so one of uh, which is that you requ you require zip codes and so on, don't you? Right. Uh, um, because yeah. we right we decided to, so you can have required fields, you can have non-required fields. It's all very easy to set up. Um, we um, had we chose a similar list, although. Um, I don't know if you memorized the Connecticut list, but a, a somewhat different list um, for what we call um, uh, user parameters or, or user um, profiles, uh, and you can you can set these up any way you want to, depending on uh, what kind of information you have to deliver and to what audiences. So they're used basically to filter either the offering of what kinds of things you can select or oh, yeah. the what output you, what you get. Yeah, right, right. So for example, if I just go to continue here and go through to the forms, there's nothing here on elder issues, uh, which you might want to see even if you're not over 60 years old. But in the case of Pine Tree, if I click that status of being over 60 years old, it actually changes the choices that I get um, in the categories to choose from. As you can see, I'm still. I have the option of putting in some little subtext there, and I'm still kind of playing with that. We're not quite launched yet. Um, you know, that's a matter of whether you, you want to add information and have it look a little busier, or you want to <laughs> make it cleaner. So, um, so, so we're going. We've got a question here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which is, um, how does this module and system look on mobile? Um, is it responsive? Good. Uh, well, we can take a look right now. We're working on that. I, I haven't looked at it in a little bit, so let's just take a quick look and see how it um, scales down. Uh, I think it does pretty good. It uh, looks like the progress bar gets a little funky, 
Um, and I probably have to do a little work there yet. In the progress bar, you can put any text you want in, and we probably need an additional mobile side. But I, I think all the fields and all, all scale down pretty well. Um, and the menu system for pine tree scales down. So it, it, uh, I think all that works pretty well. Looks like I have a little work to do on the progress bar. Um, but we'll just go back there. But yeah, the, when we finish, we will have it um, ready for mobile, as it were. Great question. Excellent. Yeah. OK, so, so do we want to put to where we were? Yeah, I want to sure. get to uh, our results page for okay. um, domestic violence help. So we'll go through the same series of questions going to family. And I'm an adult who's been abused. You might I notice wanted... that we set up our triage. We're going to talk about building the um, triage logic tree in a minute, but ours is somewhat similar to Connecticut's, but a little bit different. And again, that depends on of your state and what resources you have and how you need to triage people. Um, so uh, this is our results page, um, which is, you can see, quite a bit different from Connecticut. Um, we also have three pieces of um, information here on the left. Uh, we'll show you a little bit later how you, how you set that up. And then um, on the right-hand pane, uh, we use some of the same um, blocks as Connecticut used, but we put them in a little bit different order. Um, this user input thing we have at the bottom is really for testing purposes to see what um, user profile information people enter that's useful for testing purposes. We uh, probably won't display that. Um, to the end user when we go live. The, the system does um, keep, keep track of the federal poverty guidelines. So when people have entered information for their household size and income, if you're using that particular part, it automatically behind the scenes keeps track of where do they fall in terms of percent of poverty because you can use that for filtering some of the information that you return to people as well. Right, and you'll see a little bit more about um, how you manipulate that as an admin when we get a little deeper into it. I'm going to go briefly and look at Vermont, um, which is just getting set up. So they don't have everything there yet, but, and there's a reason that, and this has, a, this, I chose a different set of options in terms of uh, how the screens look. Um, and some of that is so, um, like if you noticed with Connecticut, um, it was set up so that the whole menu stays. Sometimes what happens is people leave the triage and kind of go back and forth. And that may be something that you like, or you may want to help encourage people to not leave triage until they're done. Um, and in that case, something like, um, let's see, I have to go back one, but when you go to pine trees, the menu is gone. The progress bar takes its place there. Uh, you can always get back home. And in Vermont, it's, it's uh, I don't know that they're going to use this, but as an example, we set up the third option, which is to really take over um, that screen, which didn't happen, huh? Isn't that interesting? What did I do? It happened when you did it the first time. Yeah. It <laughs> happened when I did it the first time. Well, that's what you get for hustling around too much uh, just before you get started. <laughs> Okay. So um, there it is. There it goes. So in this case, it's uh, the, the other screen is grayed out, and you really stay with the triage until you're done. Uh, so th those are just varieties of, of styles and options. Um, and in their case, they had fewer. They didn't want to ask many questions beforehand. Um, so you you only have three steps to kind of get to the end point. Um, and if we there. This is a little different, but fairly similar. So if we go, you see right now, they don't have any results for their that you got here yet. They haven't gotten around. Uh, they're just beginning to put information in. So this isn't finished. But I, I want to save this because uh, we're going to actually build out a little content uh, in a few minutes on this. So those, those are a kind of a quick overview of, of what a user might see on three different sites. So the first two, Connecticut and Pine Trees, looks very much 
uh, like a regular part of their site, uh, Vermont, we picked it up to do to look a little bit different. Um, and I'll go back to the slides. So we, we talked about the crux of the issue here really being the crux of the work being setting up the logic tree of how what are the questions that people might ask to get to the various uh, legal content that you want to offer. And it, it really does involve kind of the teamwork of talking to the people who deal most with clients, the people in your organization who know your content best in figuring out uh, both where holes are, where you're not offering information that would be helpful. It's a really helpful tool for that. And also, how do you guide people to get exactly what they're looking for? So and that, that is uh, this piece called the logic tree. And that's where most of the staff work went into. And do you want to talk a little about this, Kathleen, as well? Kathy wants to talk about this. <laughs> Kathy wants to talk about this, OK. <laughs> We we have we thought about this and talked about it at the beginning and decided that we wanted to limit ourselves to making each section have no more than five choices and going no more than five levels deep, hopefully less than that. We didn't want it to be overwhelming or confusing to people. Um, so we used that as our, as our basic guideline. Um, every now and then one of us had to go to a sixth something, but we really stuck to this and um, we're able, we were able to get our content to fit into this model and we're pleased with it. Not easy to and do in the beginning, but we, it's hard. once we got the hang of it and disciplined ourselves, just you know, for for user friendliness, we thought it was really essential. Mm -hmm. Convinced ourselves it was important, then we were able to sort of rein ourselves in and, and make that happen. And as people develop this uh, within the Drupal side of things, those of you who are using Drupal. Um, it, the questions, the logic tree is actually built out in the taxonomy. And, um, and there's two reasons for that. Uh, one is it's within Drupal, it's a hierarchical place where you can level things, as it were, have different levels to a particular thing. It worked really well for this idea of questions that had levels and a number of topics within each level. And secondly, it allowed kind of a two-pronged approach to delivering content. Uh, we had modeled ourselves somewhat after um, a, an early triage piece in Massachusetts that Scott Friday developed. And um, that works by kind of like a search would, is you can tag regular content in Drupal uh, with one of these questions in uh, Massachusetts or in any of these states that says, if somebody asks this question, show this content. Uh, so that's one way to do it. And then we, as we worked, we also realized that we wanted to develop um, even more granular content that we might associate with a question that wouldn't be kind of full content that you would have on a site, a page, but would be snippets or referrals or other things. Uh, so we decided that we would use, uh, we'd create a builder that would work on this as well. But the first part and the biggest part was developing the, um, this huge logic tree. So this is an example of part of the family logic tree, uh, part of the employment logic tree. And we're going to just briefly um, over in look, I think I have this over um, Safari, let's see. This is that nod to um, in Massachusetts, this is their, you know, their system, and you see there's a lot of similarities. Um, if we tried to follow down under family their um, questions to get to a restraining order, um, you'd see that it, uh, unfortunately, uh, or not unfortunately, but they've filled it out so that you actually have to go to a different place to get that information, and they tell you that. Uh, that was one of the things that helped inform us of a feature we wanted to add, which is you can link information that m might appear in several places. Debt information and restraining abuse might be under different categories. You can link together so you don't have to maintain separate places. You can maintain one place, but it shows up in several places. Um, but when we look at, at uh, Connecticut's 
um, overall list. This is a this is the administrative screen, and we're we talk about this in a, a little bit, but it shows all the categories in their depth. So they go and go. You know, it, it's quite a piece of work to develop and to really think through. And in terms of the um, administrative screen, uh, there's a reason for it to look like this, which we'll go over in a little bit. But you can see there's just tons of, of uh, thought that's gone into how do we provide information to people? What are the questions that will lead them to the information they're looking for and to content that we have? Um, did you have more to say about that, Kathy, in particular? Um, did we want to go more into this at this point or, or go into these a little later? Maybe we'll come, come back to the translation thing later, if that's all right, Brian. Sure, that's fine. OK. okay. Should, should I show how Connecticut built theirs out for the restraining order? We could do that. Sure, let's go and look at that. So um, if we go... Um, while Brian's going there, I just wanted to, to reiterate, um, Brian mentioned, <clears throat> mentioned this before, but um, the, the build out of the logic trees um, really requires a group effort. And the fact that we had three states involved and um, Kate and Kathy and Sandra and I met a lot. Um, and went through multiple drafts of logic trees and shared our logic trees and really tried to refine them. Um, and then in the end, everybody had to sort of uh, um, customize theirs for their state, but, but the group effort really helped. And then at the same time we were doing that, we were each meeting with um, intake workers and in our own organization and um, people in other organizations that would be partners where we were referring to make sure that we were asking the right questions and um, coming up with the right priorities based on uh, what they're doing. So um, this is really kind of a complicated little piece, but I think that in the end, we hope <laughs> it's worthwhile um, because once you get it in there um, and at least get a basis, even if you're going to edit it later on um, as you learn more things, it, it will, you know, serve a lot of people. So I think it's worth the effort up front, even mm -hmm. with a big job. And we also will be sharing um, these with people who are interested in doing it so that they don't have to start from scratch, as did Northwest Justice and Math and other people who have done this before us. One thing that came out of working as as a group um, is that there's a lot of flexibility built into this. Um, you saw it when when we were looking at the different examples of how the different states had put their things together, their sites together. Um, there's a there's a huge amount of flexibility and um, the types of content that we can put in and and um, how we can make them function. And that's a direct result of our team effort and you know, wanting to make sure that we could build something that not only we, but other people could use and customize as they went along and not be you know, locked into a certain format. So that was a really good um, benefit of the process, too. Um, so I can show you so how we, oh, go ahead, Brian, sorry. Oh, no, that's exactly right. Let's go and take a look then at how you um, resolve this. This was the, uh, the output for the, the question on um, restraining order in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And in terms of how they put the information together, this is a, a kind of the editing screen for that particular item. And what they did was they used a piece of reusable text uh, which we'll explain again as we go on. And then they used two pieces of node content that they knew were kind of their best content on that. And yeah. um, by so it's fairly easy to just create one of these and, and drag them over, which in fact, um, I think to give you um, an example of, I'll go ahead and do for Vermont. In Vermont, as you remember, we didn't have any content yet for this endpoint uh, that, that you needed a restraining order. 
So I'm going to go and just show you um, what we can do to create some content. And I'm first going to use, um, I'm going to create something I'm going to call an alert. I'm going to put it in the uh, top message panel. And it's going to be reusable text because I know I've created this text already. Um, and I believe that the keyword I'm looking for is get. I uh, am what we got. Nope, not going to get. Let's see what it is. Maybe I can see a clear keyword. Um, I think there it is. Okay, immediate safety. This is the one I want. Okay, so I'm going to I'm pick this. I'm going to wrap it in a warning box as well. So on the I'm going to put something over. I don't want anything there. So put that in. in the top message panel, um, I'm going to put some reusable text for to help people safety. And I, I could go and preview what this output is going to look like now. Um, and so it puts this kind of ugly thing here. We it's not the uh, but uh, that it's to demonstrate. We still don't have any content for it though. And why don't we? Uh, Custom text uh, for this. I'm going to put that in the main panel, and I'll just quickly write some. Uh, so we could actually go get one. We'll get a picture and put in here. Uh, copy the picture. Can I do that? Yes. And we'll put it on. So you're building basically you're building little pieces of content. Um, that you want to go. And then finally, we're going to want to have some actual node content reference. Um, restrain order. Um, and the way I get that is I just go and add another thing here where I get some, um, uh, let's see, uh, what is it called? It's abuse relief, I think. Relief from abuse, okay. And I'm going to I'll put in the full content. Hey, why not? Okay, so if we go and preview this now, I've, I've put in three things: this domestic violence alert, this little custom text, and a restraining order um, node content. And if I go back to preview now, if somebody goes and answers that question, this is what they would see. It's not particularly laid out the way you might want, but uh, there it is. Um, so it's fairly uh, easy to build stuff if you once you begin to get a sense of well, what is the text that we might use in a bunch of places and create reusable text blocks. Those were another of the brainstorms of the group so that you wouldn't have all this custom text that if something changed, you'd have to go and find, oh, I referenced that here, there, and the other place. Instead, you can use a reusable text place that only has to get added to one place, and that's what appears many places. We also use a little bit of custom text and then referenced a node, which is often what people do. We could also have showing here results from what we call a triage search, where information that was tagged, regular content that was tagged to show up for this question would show up here. Uh, so that, that's a real quick overview of that. Thanks, Bren. Um, okay. Do you want to let Kathy show off what she uh, she and Kate did with this as well? Back to yeah. her um, and talk a little bit more about how this works. Sure. Our, tell good, me what we're doing. Demonstration. Yeah, this is good. So that was a good demonstration of how you uh, how you build out the actions. We should have probably clarified this is after you load up the logic tree to your site. Mm -hmm. And this is when you're building out the responses that are at the end point of each um, piece of the logic tree for the user to use. So here's another example for I want to get a restraining order, the, the uh, Connecticut page that you saw, and how um, Kate and Kathy in Connecticut built this, decided to build out their response. Mm -hmm. um, so they just they did a piece of reusable text. Oh, go ahead, Joe. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, we did. We did. We used the same types of content, um, Brian. If you took, click on the type in the fourth fourth column there, the custom yeah. text at the bottom, 
Um, these yep. are the different types of text that we can put in. I, I don't know if we, we looked at that yet. I was going to mention those. The reusable text is huge. We just have all developed these massive lists of reusable text, and we can just keep dropping them in wherever we want them. And you can also drop things into multiple sections. If you go to the logic tree, isn't it there, Brian, that you can click on it, you can actually put it into a whole section of the logic tree? So if you've got something That's right, that, where you can... Yeah. If you want yes. something to show up in every, every results page for elderly, you can just click on the section and it will actually just go into all of them. So it's a, that's a big time saver. And under the region, you have choices, and I think Brian showed those too, of different places where you can position things on the, um, on the screen. The help panel is the one on the right. So if we could go back to our results page. Um, what we chose to put on all of our results pages is we have a little box for 211 that we have show up on all of our pages because we want to um, direct people there no matter what. Um, the other thing that will show up on results pages is uh, if there's something special, and Kathleen was talking about this, if there's something special for a particular group uh, that people have self-identified as being part of, it will show up on the results pages automatically. So again, that's that's something more at the administrative level that saves you a lot of work. So I guess that's a little more about using that feature. Great. All right. And um, should we go back to a brief to the slideshow briefly, Kathleen, for sure. coming over yeah. Pine Tree? Is that good? So of course this is is the fact that you put a lot a lot of time into this in order for it to be a fairly simple thing for the user to use. So what looks simple to the user actually is these hours and hours of time uh, that you've put in developing the tree. And the tree really is the basis, as Kathleen was saying. The um, the logic tree forms it all, and that's um, really what. Massachusetts had developed, which we showed you briefly over in um, in their place here, was um, that notion of the logic tree of the questions being associated with that. And we took that and then decided we would wrap the logic tree in um, with actions that could be attached to a particular branch in the logic tree, or could be a, a, uh, attached to the overall process. So. Um, Go back and we're take a little look. So you can put actions before, during, or after um, the logic tree. And before would be like questions of what your group status is, or where do you live, or how much money do you make, or other information you want want to give people. Um, during would be kind of help screen kind of information that you might show uh, that would help people understand where they are. And after might would again be on the output screen of things like the email print option or um, what the user said. Those kind of things um, are more universal or things that only some information that you want every elder to see could go in a similar after function. Um, so this gives you an example of the things before location status. Yeah. Um, and when you look at a specific piece, like this is set up so that before things happen, there is an intro text and where is your legal problem, which we've seen on all the sites, is where is your problem. Uh, and that's by setting up something before the logic tree begins. Do you want to look at your um, sure. piece here, Kathleen? That might help yeah. show this off a little bit. Yeah. Before I do that, um, I know that we're all really familiar with how this works because we've been, you know, living it, breathing it, <laughs> bleeding through it. Um, but it, we're, we're going pretty fast through a lot of stuff. Is, should we take a little pause here and see if anybody has any um, questions at this point before I dig a little deeper into how we did this part? 
Uh, so there's a question here, um, but is the module compatible not only with uh, Drupal, but with uh, DLAW 3 or 4, um, those particular? Yes. Okay. Yes, it will, it will work with um, DLAW 3 or 4. Uh, both of those basically just needs Drupal 7 to work. Mm -hmm. um, in which DLaw 3 and 4 are both in, and it also um, is handy if you use uh, DLaw because they use the NSMI, uh, which is helpful for a number of reasons um, tying things together. So you don't have to have the NSMI index on um, the site for this to work, but um, it adds some functionality straight off if you do. So yes, okay. it is compatible with both of those. Yeah, just uh, just to clarify for people, uh, DLaw is a um, free uh, template that Urban Insight has done development on um, that is available for download. Um, and the uh, NMSI is the National Subject Matter Index, um, which LSNTAP uh, just launched a new site for and will be doing an update on those uh, codes. We're looking at putting together a standards group to update those codes currently. Great question. Good. Yeah. And great explanations, Brian Rowe. Um, anybody, anybody else? Have we lost anybody else or have questions from anybody else? Okay, so um, uh, in terms of these a little deeper um, filtering functionalities that, that Brian's built in here, um, I'll try to demonstrate here. It's, it's complicated to explain, but um, so back to our uh, domestic violence response page. Um, you can see that I've loaded up three things here. The online self-help information, which uh, sends people to our basic protection from abuse step-by-step, -step, how the system works, which I've um, posted for everyone, all audiences. The second one is um, referring people to uh, our statewide domestic violence um, resource center where people can get you know, lots of kinds of help in addition to legal help because we that's kind of the they're kind of the first responders in Maine and then they uh, triage out to us and then um, the last piece here is a referral to our pro bono project um, so remember that and then let's go on the back end Okay, so that first piece of reusable text um, at the top was the online self-help information. Um, the second piece of text was the DV referral to the, uh, again, I use reusable text, um, to our domestic violence statewide group. Then you can see there are actually two more um, pieces loaded up, actions, we call them, loaded up here. One is the VLP referral, which you saw. Um, and Brian's showing you where, where I set that up. I called it VLP referral. Brian, you're just going too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to show him where I entered the text. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sure. <laughs> so I called it the VLP referral. Um, I didn't want a header on it, so I put none in the display header. I put in the text I wanted, which can include um, images and links. Um, and then, okay, Brian, now you can go, <laughs> Mr. Speedo. Um, so I wanted people who had checked earlier, or, or I'm, I'm sorry, not checked, but entered their um, household income earlier as um, under 200% of poverty. Um, the, the system knows that if they enter under 200% of poverty amount for that household size. And so I checked low income eligibility here under the restrict action visibility. That means because Brian came in as a user uh, under 200% of poverty, the VLP message go to, to our pro bono arm um, if you need help shows up. Uh, so go back. So the one that didn't display here, um, was another response, which is a referral to our Bar Association's Lawyer Referral Service. And um, 
uh, restrict action activity on that one um, is uh, to hide for people who said they were low income. So it's an al alternative um, view. If you check, if you put in your income as, as under 200%, you're going to get the BLT referral. If you, you put in your income as higher than that, uh, you're going to see the LRIS referral instead of the BLT referral. Um, so, and there's there are many different um, besides the income screen. There are the other screens that we showed you earlier that you can use. Like, um, I'm over 60. If you say you're 60 or over, then on a lot of these screens, you're going to get an alternative referral to legal service to the elderly, um, etc. So that's pretty cool. It can be a little crazy making when you're putting the thing together, but it's it's really quite um, quite robust, as they say. Yeah, the, the filters that we put into place were for any of the statuses, and the statuses, uh, like I'm 60 years old or I'm a veteran, whatever, you can you create those yourself. So you can set up whatever ones would help you filter your content. And then uh, there's also uh, county filters. And the way that the, the zip code town piece works is it, it actually goes out and gets your, your county information. It kind of does a look up on the zip code that you put in to get county information. Um, so that comes across automatically. Um, and so if you have different agencies available in different counties or different information that's relevant to different counties or only want to show things to certain counties, you can do that. Uh, and the same also with uh, the income as, as we've seen on this one. Uh, you can set up different uh, income guidelines uh, based on uh, percent of poverty. And the percent of poverty information is all um, gotten off the web as well and um, kept up to date that way. Another feature that um, you may have noticed as we've been going around on the different screens is there's a, a word that says translate. Um, Connecticut is in the process of translating our triage to um, Spanish. We aren't completely done with it yet, but the way Brian has set it up is really nice. Um, what you do is, is you go into the logic tree behind the scenes and um, you go into the translate section and you literally just copy and paste in the text in another language and um, it will be there, it will have the same rules. Um, so the, once, you've, once you've done all the labor of putting it together, the translate piece is, um, is incredibly simple. Um, Brian, can you translate it into, can you translate it several times? Um, yes, the, the way that it's set up is um, we, I basically uh, wrote kind of an add-on to the um, Drupal's own uh, international language modules. And uh, so you, within Drupal, if you have those modules in place, you can say what languages you want your site to be available in. And for Drupal's content, um, it allows you translations, special translation places then for, for any particular content that you have. Um, and I simply added that uh, same functionality to our triage actions, which are not normal Drupal content, but are um, kind of a, a smaller unit that we created. And in the administrative page, we one of the things we show. Yes. Hold on to one that's um, green. Yes, I was going to say the. Red ones. They haven't done it, but they've done a bunch. There are a bunch that are already turned green. Show where. Keep. Yes, translation is one of the features in the admin menu where you can get a preview. You can translate, and if the little gear is here, you can see that you've already entered some data on an endpoint. Um, and in some of their areas further down, you see that it's green now, and that's because they have a translation. And when you go to it whatever languages you've configured for Drupal to recognize as being part of your site, it will list those with the ability to translate. Um, and if you go to this, you can see um, right now it's just the title. It doesn't have, there's no uh, text in there to translate. It's just the title of the, oops, sorry, I just 
went the wrong place, didn't I? No. How many of those did you say Kate dropped in in an hour, Kate? Kathy? It's extremely fast because literally once it's once it's built in English, it's just copying and pasting in the text. Um, and she went through a number of the categories in, in a very short time. Um, yeah. So when you when you go to one that that isn't translated yet, it tells you that and allows you to go in and translate it. And in this case, we're only translating the um, the, the title, which we also speed it up. Um, but you can also translate the content um, if you have custom text um, associated with something. So in this case, it's, it's translating just those particular. Um, Things, but in this, when you go to the actions themselves, you can also translate the custom text there. So there's no translation here. You could go in and you could pull out that text and translate it here. Uh, like it comes across by default in the language uh, that it was written in, and then you could haul that out and, and uh, just paste in a translation, and it would be the Spanish translation. Does anybody else have any other questions about the? The translation capability or how that works? That was pretty clear. Um, okay, what else we got? Well, it's almost two o'clock. Um, I'm getting about five minutes ahead. Do we? There's. Um, I don't know what our our time limit is here. Um, maybe we can check in with Brian about that. If we um, are we on just until two, or do we have time after that? Um, we've got until 2.30, okay. so uh, another half an hour, um, yep. Okay, well probably... We tend, um, tend, to go, tend to go an hour to an hour and a half, so anywhere in that time period. All right. Well, one, one thing I, I wanted to... Uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, how the intake um, ties into this, um, because um, Connecticut has its own uh, a separate intake system that they're simply linking to. So one of the outcomes in um, triage can be that you come to a point at the end where you have on the final page it says, you know, apply now, and it takes you, it's just a link over to your existing intake. Linktree decided to build out um, an intake system in Drupal, and that is also a module which we'll be making available um, because the output is linked, uh, could be linked to different places, it probably would need some small amount of customizing to work on other sites. Uh, in our case, we're sending XML to um, output to, um, is it legal files that we have? Legal yes. files. Yep. Yeah. So our intake does that. But before we get to the intake, I just wanted to show you. Uh, one of the other pieces that we did for the triage was a summary report, and this is uh, this was live from Connecticut a couple hours ago. Um, what we did is, anytime somebody enters triage, we record what they do. So we keep a little log of do they go through all the steps? Uh, if if they leave, where did they leave? Partly so we know is this successful at all, is this helping us? And um, we, uh, we had something when they started uh, just before December 1st, I mean January 1st, but we've been refining it as we go. And probably the most accurate data is um, starts from uh, April 8th. So I, I set a filter of April 8th through the 30th, and they've had 2,500 entries into triage. And of those, a surprising number, 1,730, were people who answered the first question about, is your problem in Connecticut? Um, or, do you live in Connecticut, or is your legal problem in Connecticut? And they said no. So the, a lot of people come to the site from other states, clearly, or at least uh, where they live in other states or have problems that aren't in Connecticut. So that was really interesting to find out. Um, and yeah, can I can I interrupt just a little bit there, Brian? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I was really equally intrigued mm -hmm. about that. Um, but I think I knew that both Connecticut and Maine are pretty heavily traveled sites, and I knew that we had a lot of traffic from looking at Google Analytics that 
we had um, a lot of traffic from out of state, but um, it's nothing like this. Uh, it's, you know, I forget the percentage, but it's a much lower percentage than this. So I anticipated that a lot of people um, would be sent other places. Um, but this is, this is really, really interesting. And I think that two things. One, um, for people who have sites that are heavily trafficked from all over the country, all over the world, um, you're probably going to see uh, a lot of people drop out. On the other hand, and at the same time, you know, those people, we're dealing with people who aren't necessarily um, that good at navigating the internet, or maybe they are, but uh, uh, people who need to get headed in the right direction and be sent to the right state to start out with. So I think that just by doing that, that we're doing pretty big service. Um, so. So in, in three weeks, uh, there you know it, the numbers aren't huge, and it's not the pop-up doesn't appear. You can set the pop-up to appear on specific um, categories of information, and it's not set to appear right now on every category. So the pop-up doesn't automatically appear everywhere someone is on the site, um, and so they'd have to choose the menu option some of the time. And in three weeks, there have been 405 completed runs, which means somebody went through, answered the four steps of questions and, uh, thing and, and actually identified a legal problem and then uh, got results. So in the course of a year, that's about 7,200. Um, and you know, on the one end, that's not huge numbers. But on the other end, that's a really nice addition to what's going on because you feel like you've delivered really good information. We're not yet recording how many people come through this and get directed toward intake. And that's something that we will do at some point, but we, we're not quite there yet. I think when uh, Pine Tree goes live, we'll probably be doing that since we're uh, since the two are so closely tied. So the report gives you a breakdown by where people came from if they answered that question, and things can collapse. How many steps they completed um, of those who who weren't part of the out of service area who didn't answer the first question no and get kicked out right there, and then. What were, what were the legal problems that they're looking for? So you can see that there's um, a lot that you probably could have identified straight off. I want to get customer and children. I want a divorce. Um, my housing is, under, you know, things that come up a lot are there. And that list goes on and on, so you can see. Um, we have built in as a possibility, again, not something you have to have on. I think if you looked at, um, Pine Trees set up, they had a box where you, if you weren't seeing the question that was of importance to you, you could actually uh, log that, write a little note that would go back to the administration uh, so that you, they could say, oh, we need to address this issue. Uh, so there's a few things like that. So that report is built in and is part of it. Somebody asked the question, um, is this, will this be open source? And yes, it will be. There will be. Um, both triage and intake modules will be available for free, uh, probably through um, the uh, the NTAP site, um, maybe from a site of its own as well. Um, and I think triage, with if we get to the point of having pretty good documentation and training materials, would work as a standalone pretty well. I think the intake, uh, from seeing it work in Pine Tree's case. There's a lot of it that would work out of the box, but in terms of mapping things to your um, legal file system, whatever that might be, you would probably need to have some uh, some customization done on that. So that would probably uh, be something that while the code was open source, she would need some help uh, behind the scenes to get it to work the way that you want. But I think yeah, the triage will be pretty much completely droppable. Yeah, we, we would be happy to to post links to source code or anything like that on the LSM tab blog. Um, I would definitely recommend putting it up on uh, GitHub also, um, or we could yes. link to it on GitHub. Yes, no, we will have it on GitHub. Absolutely. We'll so out, we'll put out a um, notice to the list when we get that pulled together. Perfect. Just. Just wrapping up the triage, um, 
Trios does stand alone well. It's highly customizable. Uh, as you saw, the logic tree is, is the core of it, and the action builders expand its functionality. It's native to Drupal. Um, translation enabled. All of the stuff will work out of the box for you. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's going to be could be a useful piece. I'm hoping for other Drupal sites out there. And a piece that we're working on that's not completely developed, um, but it's close. And I think will be when we release it in the summer. Is you can you can decide to to have multiple triages. You can have many triages in a way. You can decide. Well, I have a lot of people who come looking for divorce information or employment information, and really they shouldn't. What they need they need to answer this these eight questions in order to direct them to the right information. So you could have little mini triages, as it were. That would be that you could create and then link to directly, so that instead, of, and you wouldn't necessarily need to add, ask the questions about income or where you live. Maybe you would, depends on what you want. But they could guide people into a more complicated area um, to get the answers they need. So it's kind of like a, as I say here, it's a, a simplified A to J like thing to help guide people to complicated information needs. So uh, that that feature um, I'm hoping will be available and also in use on some sites so you can see it um, by the time we release it in uh, late summer. Yeah, so if you didn't we have the resources to build out the triage for the content of the triage for your entire site or your whole universe of legal problems, um, you could choose one or two to start with or to only do those um, because you know that's where all the traffic is. Yeah, and they could be seen as just a link from a, a page or even an opening page having trouble about employment or whatever. So I, I feel like it's very flexible in those regard, and I'm uh, looking forward to seeing uh, seeing what people do with it. We wanted uh, Kathleen. We were going to show um, our link into to the um, intake system. Should we go back and do that? Yeah, I think some. Uh, Maybe fewer people, but some people would probably do like a preview of uh, how the intake thing's looking. Yes, and we uh, intake came after the triage, and we ended up doing something similar to what um, we did with triage. And we had looked at using uh, Drupal's web form modules to do intake, and it turned out it, it wasn't really robust enough to do what we wanted. So we kind of made our own uh, thing that was similar to the action builders, uh, where you can design your own forms uh, with various content on different pages or steps. Uh, we'll take you through a quick run of what it looks like and then of um, how you get there. So again, it starts off with a kind of default question, which will get you in or out. If you don't, if if you're not a U.S. citizen, basically it says you you should call us. Uh, to see if we can help you as opposed to going through an online intake. But um, yeah, the, basically you build these forms from uh, an administrative um, interface that's pretty similar to the builders where it's pretty easy just to add things and you add them as uh, we can use um, the taxonomy as one of the the place to define the the, the boxes or the steps. The um, the pages that this will go on, and I have a little cheat in here right now where normally you can't advance to pages except through um, answering all the required fields, but um, as a tester I built in a little thing so I can sneak. But and it, it has similar things with uh, you know zip code, looking up things and making you match them, um, formatting for phone numbers and that kind of stuff. Um, and this was all built with a, a form builder that uh, we designed to allow levels of complexity that um, web form didn't allow. Where that basically came up for the first time was in adding subsets, adding um, multiple household members. Um, and that was just a hard thing to do properly in web forms. Uh, and so it worked much better to just do it from this end. 
Uh, and a lot of things are dependent, conditional on other fields. If you answer yes here, then something else shows up, and, and so on. So uh, it, you know, it takes about we figure it takes about ten or fifteen minutes to answer all the questions. And when you get through at the end, normally, as I say, you couldn't advance past these red ones. Um, but I using my little programmer shortcut because um, I didn't want to put in all the data while you're sitting here watching. And when you get to the submit, then it would send all this data. It would translate it all. One, it would save it online encrypted in a place where we could keep it in Drupal but encrypted. But it would also then take that data and translate it into an XML file that it will send to the home office where they're imported as XML into their legal files system. So, uh, and it actually is connected up with the intake now so that if we go back and look at a um, I think we can look at this anyway. So if you were doing the um, triage, and in this case, it remembers me because I haven't left yet. I think Washington County is on on to that. Um, if we went through, I think on foreclosure uh, is one thing that Pine Tree might be able to help you with, right? So not every legal problem would lead you to intake because Pine Tree couldn't help you with every legal problem that you might have. They might be able to direct you somewhere else. But foreclosure um, is one. And if you had gone through the triage and had answered the questions and it said, yes, I've been served court papers, I want to keep my home. So you've gone all this way and go to get your information. One of the things, and we probably will um, make this add some little styling so it looks more like a button, is that because we were under income, because we live in Washington County, which is a county that they serve, have said they serve for this, because we're under 200%, um, and because the issue is foreclosure, we get a link to their online help, which is their intake system. So we go from that, of course, now I've gone to the live pine tree because that's where the link points. I'm sorry, I, I can't show you from there. That was my error. Um, this would, uh, it's hard coded in there. Uh, I have to take it off. Uh, it would go through to, um, to the intake system that I showed you a minute ago, but I have it hard coded to something that's not uh, yet on the live system. So not quite as satisfying as if you'd seen us go there, but hey, we were close. Yeah, we're, probably, we're trying to go live with the triage in Maine um, within the next week, and then the intake piece, is, which is why this is set up to go to contact us and not the intake piece, will probably um, come out later in the spring or early summer. So anybody um, have any more any questions about the intake piece? We went through that pretty quickly. Um, we're also going to install that in Vermont, as um, Brian mentioned. Connecticut already has their own intake. It's A to J, right, Kathy? Yeah, we're u we're using A to J, and we have we have it in in. It looks the same because really you just click on a link and it takes you to the next step. In our case, it takes you to a an introductory page to the A to J interview, either in English or Spanish. Right. So obviously, if you already have an intake system, uh, online intake set up, um, you can, you know, segue uh, through links from the um, from the triage piece into your, whatever intake system you have. Um, no questions. Press we have worn everybody out. <laughs> Uh, if you enter information it, into intake, can you get transferred into triage? Um, it actually goes the other direction. The other way, yeah. Yeah, sorry. See, we, we weren't quite clear about that. Um, you, you Basically, we hide the intake, um, the online intake, uh, so that you have to go through the triage in order to use the online intake, and only uh, certain people at the end of the triage uh, get 
the, as my executive director likes to say, the magic door open <laughs> um, for people we can actually handle. Other people get just online um, links to online information or referrals to other organizations. But you can, oh, and sorry. we are carrying information from triage into intake. That that is true. Oh, that we, I'm sorry. we are. Yes. That makes yes. sense. Yeah, we're intaking. Yeah. Um, again, there are options the way Brian has it built. Um, you can um, intake the path that you said path into intake, or in Maine, actually, we're building a little system where um, we're going to import. Uh, the NSMI, LSD, NSMI code into the intake based on where the person ended up at the end of the triage, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess we wore everybody out. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all for um, sticking with us here. Yep. And um, if the, if, go for it. Oh, no, that's fine. You're good, Brian. Um, if you've got any feedback on this training, please let us know. I put a link to a SurveyMonkey survey um, in the chat there. Um, we will be editing this and should have this up before next week. Um, also, if anybody here is going out to the Equal Justice Conference, um, I'll be there uh, for all three days. Uh, I look forward to actually uh, meeting people in person that I only interact with here online. Uh, thank you guys so much for putting this on. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, this is definitely one of our more popular topics with online intake and triage. So and thank you, And if anybody's everybody. interested in more, learning more stuff, uh, please get a hold of one of us. Thanks. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank, thank you. Everyone. you.